what's wild about this story is it's nearby Sissonville, West Virginia, a big, big story that we did recently. So from what I heard and from what I understand, Sissonville and Putnam County are different places, definitely not the same thing. So I'm not going to go in on that. But nonetheless, what this person did doesn't seem to represent the standard of the people that used that live in that area, used to live in that area. But let's talk about what this woman did to a little baby. Okay. If you've never been to my channel, here's a disclaimer. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. So my source for this story is WCHSTV.com. So Putnam, a Putnam County mother has been charged after police say that her 16-day-old infant died of multiple serious injuries. 16 days. Didn't even make it a month. Brooke Kessler 32 years old. I'm wondering, what, what are y'all going to say? She's too young. She's didn't know no better. 32 years old. She's 32 years old of Hurricane is charged with death of a child by parent or guardian, according to a news release from the West Virginia State Police. Police said that the infant, a girl, had multiple serious injuries that medical staff at KAMC Women and Children's Hospital said were suspicious and was not accidental. The infant was brought to the hospital on Thursday from Charles Court in Hurricane Trooper said. Now, according to a criminal complaint filed in Putnam County Magistrate Court, police said that when they arrived at the, at the hospital, they observed bruising around her throat and on the back of her head, as well as bruising on her left eye and a swollen right arm that was broken. I want to brace you guys. Uh, let me see. Do I have that warning? I probably don't. Let me see if I can find it. Following video contains material that may be traumatizing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. For the information I'm about to tell you guys, what happened to this 16-day-old baby? They also found this baby to be in the state of having six broken ribs as well as like what i said earlier a right arm that was broken and swollen who wants to make an excuse for this sad excuse for a mother y'all want to blame it on postpartum what she was going through. Y'all don't know what she was going through at 32 years old. Y'all don't know what kind of stress she was under. I'm just curious who's going to make the excuse for her. Does anybody feel sad for her? Or do you feel sad for the baby instead and want to get justice for the baby? I would hope that people want to get justice for the baby. Police. T.A. Fisher conducted a follow-up investigation and interviewed Kessler, the mother. During the interview, police said Kessler told them she put her hand around the baby's neck and on the back of her head when she was burping because she was irritated with the baby and herself and probably squeezed too hard, causing those injuries. Ms. Kessler stated she didn't intend to squeeze that hard. Fisher wrote in a criminal complaint. Ms. Kessler also stated that the ribs may have may have broken when she picked the baby up by the chest to burp her and she was irritated and squeezed the baby too hard, possibly breaking the ribs of this 16 day old baby. Any excuses yet? Kessler told troopers that she did not feel any ribs break and did not break the baby's arm. Even though 
they medically found that the baby's arm was broken. But I guess just baby's arms just break out of nowhere, right? Just on their own, they just, oh, it just breaks out of nowhere, right? Kessler told police that she did not feel any ribs break and did not break the baby's arm. She suggested her husband may have done that when picking up the baby. So she's pointing the blame at her husband. In an interview with Kessler's husband, troopers said he told them that his wife had been struggling with postpartum depression and had been aggressive with the infant. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kessler stated that he has had to stop her a few times from shaking the baby and that he would take the baby from her and have to have her cool off, Fisher said. I would have immediately called the police. Right then and there. She wouldn't have got another chance. This officer asked Mr. Kessler about the accusations of breaking his baby's arm by picking her up, which he replied he would pick her up and let her bounce on his chest, but was never aggressive with her. The child's paternal grandmother was also interviewed as part of the investigation. She told police that her son had been texting her for help since the baby's birth because Kessler was suffering from postpartum depression and was not caring for the child or changing the child's diapers. The grandmother says she cared for the infant from June 9th to June 14th. The doctors determined the baby had severe intracranial pressure or swelling of the brain and possible skull fractures. Court records say it. Skull fractures. Doctors also determined that the infant's heart may have stopped due to asphyxiation and explained that the girl was technically still alive at the time but was not responding to any stimuli. Police said that they took Kessler to the Winfield Detachment for another interview on Friday where they said that the baby's injuries happened at their home on Charles Court around early afternoon of June 20th. She, initially, she was initially charged with, the child, with child abuse, causing serious bodily injuries, strangulation, and malicious assault. On Sunday, the infant was taken off life support at the hospital. Kessler's charges were upgraded on Monday morning. She is currently in custody at the Western Regional Jail. Police said that the investigation remains active and ongoing, so I don't know if she has a bail or if she doesn't. And then her trying to pass off blame to her husband. Now, why didn't he immediately call 911 after the first time is beyond me. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. I don't know about y'all, but I personally don't have any room for any excuses, postpartum, or whatever. If you're going to have postpartum, then maybe you shouldn't be having kids and maybe they shouldn't be in your custody if your mental state will put the children in danger. Maybe the fathers need to start getting custody because guess what they're not having? You don't have the fathers having postpartum depression. Maybe they need to get custody of the kid until they realize, okay, you don't have postpartum. Now you're safe to be around your kid. But I digress. Maybe I'm wrong for suggesting really good solutions but y'all do me a favor leave a comment let me know what you think a mother is facing charges after her 16 day old baby died troopers say the baby was brought to the hospital where the staff said the injuries appeared to be suspicious and non-accidental 33 year old brooke kessler of hurricane was arrested for child abuse strangulation and malicious assault on friday however her charges were upgraded to death of a child by parent or guardian after the baby was taken off life support and died Good evening, Dan. Thank you for joining us tonight on this Monday evening. Our top story, a Putnam County woman is facing up to life in prison if convicted after her baby died in a Charleston hospital with some disturbing injuries. As Eyewitness News reporter Bob Aaron tells us, the infant had been fighting for her life since last Thursday. 
Only 16 days old when state troopers say she was injured last Thursday in her hurricane home, the child fought for her life at Charleston's Women and Children's Hospital. Court documents say she had six broken ribs, a broken arm, bruising consistent with strangulation, and serious head injuries. Those had already brought charges of child abuse, strangulation, and malicious wounding against the mother, 32-year-old Brooke Kessler. She had told a trooper she might have squeezed too hard on the baby's neck and accidentally broken her ribs, burping her. She denied breaking the child's arm. Other family members, according to the criminal complaint, thought she was having postpartum depression. A clinical psychologist told Eyewitness News, while many women get postpartum blues, only about 14 percent suffer depression. They are still possibly capable of causing harm to a child from frustration without the distortion of thinking, um, being overwhelmed, being sad hormonally, because a lot of this has to do with hormones. Um, it's treatable, some of the symptoms are treatable, but it's tragic. A tiny fraction of mothers get postpartum psychosis where they lose touch with reality. Clayman talked in general terms and is not involved in this case. On Sunday afternoon, the baby died of her injuries about 3.41 in the afternoon. The charges against Kessler were then upgraded. She now faces 15 years to life if convicted of death of a child by parent or guardian. And that if something bad happens, very often they'll say they don't remember it, they don't know what they were doing, um, that wasn't their intent, they would never cause harm to a child, and that's when um, questions begin to arise about what the real basis of their change in behavior is about. The criminal complaint says in a final interview, Kessler stuck to her original statement about how the injuries occurred, but when asked yes or no, did she hurt the child, she did answer yes. In Putnam County, Bob Aaron, Eyewitness News. And I always like to use this comparison. I want y'all to think about this. I always ask people, what if you heard this story and this were a husband and you heard that the husband is arrested because they found his wife with a broken arm, swollen arm, three broken ribs, skull fractures, and marks around the neck from asphyxiation. If a man did this to a woman, what would you guys think needs to happen to him? Most people would immediately say, oh, hell no. And she ended up dead. They'd be like, this man needs life in prison. He did it. He's guilty. Don't care about no postpartum depression or, or, or depression, no excuses, no nothing. Put that man under the jail, right? So I always wonder how we can all be on board with that and 100% be in agreement on that. But somehow there's always this big effing gray area, and I'm trying not to cuss, I'm trying to keep it clean, trying to keep it PG. There's always this gray area when it comes to babies, and then all of a sudden now we're questioning like her intent, her mindset, her emotional state, as opposed to just saying, nope, you admitted to this, you got to go, you're guilty flat out what is a 12 day old baby supposed to do to be able to protect themselves at least for adult women and shout out to my good beautiful sisters and women out there who understand that i love y'all and i say this out of love and respect for y'all mainly out of respect at least you're when when these domestic situations at least you're adult enough somewhat quick enough somewhat strong enough, somewhat have the wherewithal to be able to call for help, get away, or to at least be able to fight back. That's at least something that you have in your arsenal. To compare a full adult grown woman to a baby and ask, now what can a baby do to defend themselves? They can't speak, they can't walk, they can't feed themselves. They don't have the understanding or the wherewithal. What is a 12-day-old baby supposed to be able to do to provide and protect themselves? And that's why I believe in super aggravated child abuse laws. And I think that anybody who violates a baby who cannot speak or defend themselves against the tyranny of their caretakers, I think that they should face the harshest penalties known to man. 
no rehabilitation, no release, no second chances when you do this to babies. I stand on that. RIP to that little baby. I would love to pay homage. We don't have a picture. But to this woman, don't give her no damn excuses. If you have an excuse for her, please at least present a good excuse. Okay? In the comment section, let me know. Thank you.